All right. Let's do this. What's going on? I hope you're having a great day. Give it a minute or two. Actually, let's just go one minute. Let people join and we'll get started. So hope you're having a great day. I'm doing my best to cut uh, the intro part shorter and shorter. Eventually, I'm just going to dive right into it. So let's go 10 more seconds and we're just going to get started. I got a good one for you. Really, really excited about this. All right. This is Coach Scotty Russell. And in today's video, I'm going to reveal two things robbing your creative growth. And these two things, they're going to compound over time, which is going to make you feel creatively stuck. And worse, it's going to wear you down to the point where you are ready to quit. No bueno. Not only am I going to dive deep into both of these two harassing hoodlums, but I'm going to follow up with three tips to help you get back on track so you can start soaking up those sweet, sick gains that you have always felt out of reach. You know, why is everybody else experiencing these? Well, maybe it's because of these two things that are holding you back. And maybe everybody else is applying these three solutions that I'll be talking about. So right from the jump, I'm going to bet you one shiny Bitcoin that you've most certainly dealt with these two following things. One, shiny object syndrome and or two, Superman syndrome. And so for me personally, anytime I tiptoe the edge of burnout or I fall into some type of depressing creative funk, I can always retrace it to these two harassing hoodlums. Like they seem to be at the stem of everything that is throwing me off, being overwhelmed, highly anxious, feeling behind, whatever it is. Like they truly throw me off my game and they blind me from doing what matters most during whatever season I'm in. And you know, and I'm currently in a new season starting from scratch again, reinventing myself. So um, if you deal with that as well, you know, like Larissa and Kyle, I know not a lot of people are here right away and that's okay. Appreciate you being here, but let me know if um, you can relate to these, you know, does shiny object syndrome or Superman syndrome, do these kind of like get to your head as well. But regardless, in the meantime, uh, if you listen back to the replay, let's identify what these two harassing hoodlums that are robbing you are. And then I'm going to follow it up with those three solutions uh, I implement continually to get me out of a hole. So the problems here. So number one, let's just dive into shiny object syndrome. So in my articulated definition, shiny object syndrome means being interested and distracted by anything new that positions itself as an opportunity. When you can't seem to focus, execute, or gain any traction, maybe it's because you have your hands involved in too many things. Yeah, that's been like the story of my life. So it's easy to live in a world of split focus only for it to divide your attention and efforts into too many buckets of interest. I, I get it. There's a lot of things I like. There's a lot of things I feel I'm good at. There's a lot of things I feel like I could be great at. But not everything is a priority. Not everything deserves my attention. And often what I feel are priorities are really distractions. But because I don't have – or what comes as opportunities is really distractions. And the reason why they all look like opportunities to me that I say yes to during a season is because I don't have my priorities dialed in. You know, Everything seems like a priority, so everything is an opportunity. I say yes to everything, and then I burn myself out. So. It's super easy. I understand like the majority of my students have this issue. It's so easy to live in a world of split focus only for it to divide your attention and your efforts into too many buckets of interest. I think I said that already, but shiny object syndrome overall is going to have you committing to okay opportunities due to lack of defined priorities. And as you say yes to these non hell yes opportunities that are really distractions disguised as opportunities it's then going to hold your bandwidth hostage. So once you've said yes to all these things that are just okay distractions and a hell yes opportunity comes along the way, your your bandwidth is already filled or then you'll take on even more and then truly wear and grind yourself down. So man, I am a professional at doing this and I've gotten better each year, but by no means have I mastered this. I am literally teaching and sharing what I've experienced and what I'm going through and what I'm figuring out as I go along the way. I teach what I know and I share so I can grow. So number two, all right, there's number one, shiny object syndrome. Number two, Superman syndrome. Dun, 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 dun. This is the feeling that you have to do it all, all the time. 
This eventually becomes your kryptonite and prohibits explosive growth in an intentional direction. <laughs> I'm speaking to myself here, but when you experience Superman syndrome, you pile your plate high because you tell yourself, I thrive in chaos and I love the pressure. And then you procrastinate, you burn yourself out. Yeah, negative self-help consequences. And you glorify being busy over being productive. Mm. Mm. I hope that one hits home. But you also feed yourself the excuse that now you're too busy to accomplish the results that you really want. When in reality is what you're saying, what you truly want just isn't a priority. I'm so busy. I can't do X, Y, and Z, even though this is what I really want to start. This is what I really want to do. But what you're saying, it's just not a priority because you're too busy doing all this other shit that doesn't matter. Also with Superman syndrome, you find yourself stretched too thin and you're spinning your wheels, seeing minimal results in a million different directions. Infamous. I piled my plate up high. All I've ever known is a super piled plate since I uh, was in high school and I backed into a car my sophomore year at a basketball game during a blizzard. Couldn't even see it. It was like, looked like a snowbank. Backed into a car, a little dent, and it was like a couple thousand dollars for a tiny little dent. And so I had to get to work at like the age of 14 or 15 at a place called High V, pushing in carts, um, picking up cigarette butts in the parking lot. It sucked. But I also had after school programs. I was also in sports when I was in college. I did football. I had night classes. I had... Uh, I was coaching football and playing football after I blew my back out um, due to two years of injuries, but I also had an internship and plus I had my job back at Hy-Vee pushing in carts. Literally all I've ever known is a full play. I just know how to operate with a lot of shit going on. And I felt like that was a superpower when really I'm starting to learn like, actually, no, maybe it's all holding me back from that next level of what I, my potential could be. So I personally dealt with both shiny object syndrome and Superman syndrome. Uh, syndrome. I keep saying syndrome. Uh, I've dealt with both of them, Superman and shiny object. And I found that either or both for me, as well as the students that I talk to and people I talk to on the daily, both of them tend to lead to either taking zero action due to decision-making paralysis analysis. You know, it's like going into Walmart, into the cereal aisle, and it's like, holy crap, there's so many different cereals. I have no idea what to pick. Or Superman syndrome or shiny object syndrome tend to lead to burning out because you exhaust yourself by doing too much. Okay. You expended way too much energy, went past your bandwidth, and then your body is forcing you to listen. You tried grinding yourself in an early grave and your life like in your uh, your body's like, uh-uh, no, it's time to rest. I will make you get sick. I will force you into rest. I've dealt with that a lot. So together, shiny object and superman syndrome, together they create this poisonous distracting cocktail that forces me personally to procrastinate, stay up late, miss out on family time and put self-care in the back burner. All these things that are true priorities to me, but because I lacked priorities within the business world of my creative business at times, and I get myself into a hole, I then suffer in my personal life. So that's a big, big area I work and on myself daily is that I also go deep with my students. Like this is, this is huge. Everybody wants the external sexy results of big money clients, followers, all this shit. But I'm like, at the same time, you haven't even mastered the priorities within your business and separated those with constraints and boundaries away from your personal life and those priorities, two different buckets, you know, um, I'll talk about this later, but something I'm recently hearing in a book for like the fifth time reading it, I'm always learning something new, the one thing from Gary Keller, but I'll save that for like a another written blog post. But back to this, like it got so bad in years past that I would find myself questioning after I was like so burnt out, so paralyzed from doing something I really wanted to do. Like I would find myself literally questioning, like, should I give up this creative quest? Am I taking on too much? Am I just not cut out for this? You know, someone, everybody else seems to have it all figured out. But those who I feel are the most successful that I study, they simplify the game. They do less but better, which we'll get to here in a second. So um, thankfully, there are a few things I've learned to continue to practice, which we're going to get to. But I will say in the meantime, if you are enjoying this and finding this helpful, can you just do two things? Please consider liking this video if you like the video so more people can see it. And then just subscribing to the channel if you want to vibe out to this weekly. Really mean a lot to me, but now let's pivot to the solutions. And at the end, I'll catch back up on the chat, open it up for questions, and we'll call it a day. And you can be on your way. Okay. So, solutions. I kind of just foreshadowed this, but number one, do less but better. Do less but better. 
do less but better. Uh, every week I keep talking a little bit about this more, but I'm drilling it in people's heads and I'm understanding not everybody sees it each week. So to me, like success isn't about addition. It's about subtraction and it's about finding who you truly are at your core, what your strengths are, where your passions lie and how you can go all in. Like the select few tasks that you focus on are going to deliver the biggest results over time. So do less but better. This is my ongoing yearly New Year's habit because resolutions are flaky. So if you're trying to find your creative groove or you're just simply plateauing and suck, honestly, I'm going to suggest picking one priority focus on versus casting a wide net. And next week, I'm going to go even deeper on prioritization. I think it'll be super helpful, but stop trying to cast a wide net. Go deeper. Simplify the game. Go small. Have big targets, but go small with your select focus of where you put it to get those big results. So go deep within that one lane for a season and own it. You know, I know uh, Steph's in here and Steph and I literally just got off um, the phone texting each other about this new pivot she's going to go in with her NFT and her artwork and connecting the old Steph world of art with the new wave that she's going and really, really focusing in one lane. Let's kill the website. Let's kill like the actual analog painting and like focusing on Instagram and let's go all in one platform, Twitter, one focus, your NFT project and one focus of building relationships, connecting with creators, collectors, marketplaces, and just like finding your true voice and style within your secret sauce, empowering and uplifting and inspiring women who may not have a voice or the confidence uh, to make moves that go against the grain of the traditional system that we've just been force fed in this propaganda and shit, but we're not going to get political here. Um, but going deep within that one lane for a season and just owning it. When I think of Steph right now, and her pursuits, going all in on this lane, everything else is a distraction that doesn't align with these priorities. It's going to help her focus. It's going to help her productivity. It's going to help her momentum. It's going to make it way easier to gain traction, and it's going to massively help in relationship building. I think that's the fifth one here, and I'm holding down the thumb. Um, but this is what it is for me, too, when I'm constantly trying to simplify the game. I know the path I want to take now. It's been a while. I had to go through two years of just being banging my head against the wall, forcing things to work when something else was on the horizon, but I just didn't see the path yet. And I feel like I'm starting to see the path each day. Steph knows what I'm talking about here. Um, but you'll see that path here soon enough, but that's solution. Number one, do less, but better. Now solution number two dose is make a distractions list. I actually have uh, something within the side hustlers handbook at side hustlers handbook.com. Um, where I help you set your priorities and create these certain types of lists. But here's just like a very low hanging fruit list uh, to create and leverage. So make a distractions list. Anything that doesn't align with your one priority during this season that you're in is a distraction. Like look how easy we can make this reducing the emotion and making things so objective versus subjective. When we have clear priorities, the path is clear. Uh, the the distractions that were once disguised and cloaked as opportunities, we can see through the bullshit. We can be like, actually, that's not a good fit for me during the season because I have my distractions list, you know? So what I want to give you an action item to do is to create a list of things you usually say yes to, but then you always realize like, damn, this is always holding me back from what's most important. The hell yes, top priority during this season and me, I'm juggling a couple priorities, but in my opinion, they're all overlapping and they're like setting me up for the slow pivot of where I really want to be, where I can hyper condense everything. So I, I've learned, I've learned, I've had like five priorities the last two years of building this business on the side, saying no to the podcast saying it is like really crazy hard for me during this season, but this is the new wave of the podcast for me. But then like also saying no to freelance work, saying no to like merch and everything. All, the, all those are all in my distractions list right now. They take me back from where I want to focus, which is coaching and building influence via video through Instagram live, YouTube live. This is the focus as well as my side hustle right now that gets about 20% of my bandwidth is uh, my NFT web three coaching, collecting and creating pursuits, which that bucket will be growing more. So, but anything that doesn't align with these is a hell no for me. So, I want to challenge you to identify what are these distractions? What are the okay yeses or the absolute hell no's 
that you should not be saying yes to during the season and identifying them, having them written down, like getting them out of your head in front of you is going to slowly start to rewire your blur, uh, your brain to just empower you to say no in the moment when they arise out of the wild, you know, sporadically like, oh, hey, here's an opportunity. Actually, no, I understand now. I've rewired my brain to learn that this is a distraction. And during that moment now, you can you don't have to overthink it. It's objective versus subjective. Like, oh, what if I said yes to this? Or what if I don't say yes? The opportunity will never come back to me. I'm like, bullshit. Yes, it will. Yes, it will. If it's meant to be, it will come back, especially if that's your priority and focus that you want to pursue during this season or the next. But when you're able to say no to something that isn't a priority in the moment, that's what a professional does. That shows you have mad respect for yourself, your current season you're in, and the path that you're on, and the results that you're trying to attain, the targets, the goals, the vision, you know, and and, and it's respecting the focus. You know, you're really building that muscle of focus, prioritization, and moving your end yourself from the end of the spectrum of hobbyist to professional despite even if you have a day job. So uh, number three, solution number three, read these two books. These two books have changed my creative biz pursuits. I am who I am today. I'm a better coach. I am a better family man and everything because of these two books. Actually, I can give you a third one too. Uh, the One Thing by Gary Keller. Currently listen to this for like the fifth time now. It's an annual once a year um, book for me. And basically it's just breaking down the power of focusing on one thing during a time. And for me, it's really hard to like get down to one thing, but I used to do like five things. So now I'm doing like two to three, but I also do my thing full time. So I have a little bit more bandwidth, but I'm continually trying to eventually get it to two things and then one thing. So, um, the one thing by Gary Keller, I'll actually, uh, post that in the chat real quick. I that one up on the screen because I can do all this cool stuff on the fly. Um, the second one is essentialism by George McCown. Uh, this is where I learned the phrase do less, but better as it highlights the importance of determining what's a priority and what's a distraction. So I'll also post that in the chat. And then a third one would be um, deep work by Cal Newport. So I'll just type that one out. Deep work. And that one essentially is how to focus now that you know your priorities, you understand what are your top projects, what are your top tasks, how to like eliminate distractions and get truly lost within your work to optimize your finite time to become a productivity machine, you know? So um, for me, I feel like I specialize not only in mindset, but focus, prioritization, and productivity. You know, and students of mine, they, they understand because, man, I hit this stuff hard. I hit this stuff super hard. Um, but let me give you a fourth one here. So number one, do less but better. Number two, make a distractions list. Number three, read those two. I'll give you a third book. There's a bonus. The One Thing by Gary Keller, Essentialism by George McCown, and uh, three, Cal Newport. Those are really important. Also, Simon Sinek, Start With Why. I feel like that's a really good one too to add into there. But here's a bonus fourth one. I really hope those three tips are helpful. But the fourth one, you know, if you if you found like you're still struggling, with prioritization and these two harassing hoodlums like shiny object syndrome and then just Superman syndrome, they keep holding you back, you know, and you're your own bottleneck. You're not sure where to put your focus and understand what matters most that's going to help you find the most success and distinguish busy work from prioritized work that drives the most potential. So if you're struggling with that, just know I have the Q3. Uh, the Q2 three week side hustlers boot camp is literally right around the corner. And the focus or and the theme of this is all about focus, prioritization, and productivity. Like literally my bread and butter. I think I I thrive in this area. And I'm in a current season of, of revamping this and going back to the basics with myself now that I'm in this new season, starting from scratch, understanding what is a priority. And so I'm literally in the trenches practicing what I preach as I go and showing you like, here's how I'm literally leveraging everything I'm going to be teaching you. This is what's working for me. This is what isn't. Now, how can we parallel it to your own business? So um, I'm really gifted in a humble way. I'll say that helping people dial in your top priorities, your projects and tasks during a season with the entire goal. So we can reduce your guesswork, find clarity on your path and just Truly enjoy the work you're creating. Purposeful play that's also super intentional, strategic, and 
pushes the needle forward to where you want to be. So for example, during our 21 days together, I'm going to be sharing my exact processes for determining your priorities, scheduling out how I schedule out my entire year, how I then navigate my main projects and top tasks, uh, how I plan my daily attack, as well as how I create proven systems to just knock shit out within my limited bandwidth. You know, I have my personal business. I have my side hustle. I go to the gym, focus on fitness. I'm a family man. And, you know, I still make time a lot for my students and stuff. So like, how can I get so much done when other people have less time than me and can barely see any results in the same place year after year after year? Let me show you how. And not only that, you're going to experience working with a powerful group uh, of my coaching students within this powerful accountability setting where we have twice a week live group coaching calls, weekly, highly actionable, easy to implement exercises. Like you will see results. Give me 21 days. I will rock you. I promise. So if this does interest you, this is that bonus fourth tip um, to really eliminate these two harassing hoodlums. Consider joining the waitlist at Bootcamp Side Hustle. It will be in the description link. Um, let me drop this in here and you can learn more about this. And then don't hesitate to uh, hit me up. But if you're watching this video later, uh, later um, you know, enrollment open up, opens up on Wednesday, uh, the 4th of May. And then the boot camp actually takes place Saturday, May 14th through Friday, um, June 3rd. So it's going to be twice a week live calls. And I do ones on Saturdays because everybody's side hustlers. That's usually when people have availability. And then we'll do Wednesday middle check-in live coaching Q&A kind of stuff. So, um, But if you're hearing this at a later date, just joining that same link is going to take you to the wait list. So you get first dibs on any uh, upcoming quarterly boot camp because I'll still have a Q3 boot camp and a Q4 boot camp, and they all carry and build off each other. So you have a whole year worth of accountability, measurable growth, and support. So in conclusion, uh, get your questions ready. I'll stay for like 10 minutes. If people have questions, I'll catch up in the chat. But uh, in conclusion, my entire goal as a coach is just to radically help you take control and make moves like a confident pro. And I'm hoping that's like those three main tips today that I dropped and then identifying those two harassing hoodlums is kind of revealing areas that you're stuck, but maybe just blind to because you're so close to what you do each day. So I do hope that this session revealed how you're robbing your own self from the growth you're seeking. And often we're the ones who are in our own way. We're believing limiting beliefs about ourselves, or we tell ourselves we don't have enough time or that we're too busy. When if you give me like just a little bit of time working with me, I will reveal all the areas you're wasting time, what isn't a priority, why this is busy work, and here's where you should be uh, putting your max focus based on your passion, your interests, your strengths, your targets, your visions, and why we're all like working on the mindset too. So chances are if you're struggling with shiny object syndrome and Superman syndrome, chances are you're doing too much and it's more just about simplifying the game you're playing. So I'm going to open this up to questions. Thank you so much for being here again, like subscribe, all that fancy stuff. And uh, next week I'll be doing this like 30 minutes later, um, 12 30 PM because I have a group coaching call and I need to have a little bit of bandwidth going into the next portion of my day. And then I leave the crop conference next week. So if you're going to go to crop conference, drop it in the chat, but now let me catch up on anything in the chat that I'm missing. Okay. Cool. 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 So Larissa says I've dealt to continue to deal with both shiny object and Superman syndrome. Be more of a where it helps me to notice it quicker. And I put myself back on trap. Exactly. Like I would say most thing, most people just struggle with the self-awareness part they realize all these certain things like, man, I'm burning myself out. I'm doing too much, but they don't know where to start. It's like functional medicine. Instead of being prescribed, here's a pill to take care of this side effect, but then this pill could cause another side effect. So you better have another pill to put on top of it when really it's like, yo, let's get to the core issues and struggles. Usually it's mindset and then just lack of like hard skills of self-management, time management, project management, prioritization, focus, how to be more productive. You know, like it, this is like functional medicine, but for creative business people. So um, yeah, Steph and Kyle both say they deal with both of them. Um, here's another one. Been fighting that, Kyle says, been, keep, been fighting that give up mentality recently, but I realize I just have too much life stuff on my plate. 
Yeah, list it all out. What is a priority? You know, I talk about this often, and I'll probably say it again next week. I don't really care. I'm in a season of talking about prioritization. So it's important to me. And again, I'm sharing what I learn so I can share and grow. But think about like what are the top three things in your personal life that are important to you? For me, it's family, fitness, and finances. Then within your creative business side hustle pursuit, like the day job is just a given. Go and crush it at your day job. Like I'll never tell someone to be a piece of shit at their day job. Like leverage your day job, fuel your dream job, get that raise, build more freedom, build the runway to do your thankful time if that's the goal. But then think of one to three things within your side hustle. Kyle, I want to dive deep and be like, what's the one thing in your creative side hustle that brings you the most joy, delivers the most results and relies on your biggest strengths? What's the one thing? Now, what's the top three things? For you, definitely, I would be like, go all in on one thing for a season. And, and a season is arbitrary. You know, for me, when I started blogging and podcasting, I gave both of those a season of, I'm going all in for a minimum of two years on these, a minimum. And I don't have any defined external results that I need to get out of it. I'm just going in with the mission of finding my voice, finding my groove and connecting with my art, providing as much value as possible, building no like, and trust. And I just trusted that the next step will reveal itself, which it did. Blogging for two years, well, one year led to podcasting, which then led to speaking, which then led to coaching, which now has all led me to live streaming and coaching and boot camps and 12-week programs. So yeah, it's pretty wild. Um, but just go all in, embrace the unknown. Let's see, Larissa, giving up is so easy, but not satisfying. We will feel sorry about giving up. One day we'll get there. Even snails make progress and find their way. Let's be snails. Ha! Yes, let's be snails and not sluggish snails. Just slow and steady and appreciate the appreciate progress type of snail. Definitely. Um, and then Larissa, yeah, man, it, this is the power of showing up live. I'm just going to like put you on blast and uh, give you some airtime, you know, put your face up on the screen or, you know, drop in value. Let me share it. So, um, Larissa also says, I'm already putting in all my available time into my one thing. Does reading these books help you work faster? Else reading them will only distract you for your one thing. Um, so how I see it, uh, I know I need to wind down at night before I go to bed and me just staring at my phone. Is it going to help me do that? So that's where I do. Um, I'll read my book for like 15 minutes and then I'll have it stack. And then I'll do like my nightly meditation in order to quiet my mind. Cause man, that thing goes nuts. I have a really hard time sleeping. I've always Never been a really great sleeper. One, it was because I was over-caffeinated. But two, my mind is just always racing, focused on new ideas or just like anxiety over pressures of life. So I'll read a little bit so I'm not looking at a screen. And then uh, I'll do my nightman meditation. And then often in the morning, maybe I'll read like 10 minutes while I'm eating breakfast on something. But I thrive the best with audiobooks so I can always listen to something in the car. Like I love podcasts too, but I'm in a season of books again. Um, I, I tend to vary with my seasons, but um, when I'm in the shower and I have these things called uh, aqua notes, so I can literally take notes, do sketches, write down my ideas in the shower, and uh, I can listen to podcasts, audiobooks. But I'm, I'm in a season of listening to audiobooks heavy again right now and revisiting these specific books because I need them again for the new season that I'm in. But yeah, I, f I find areas to fit them in within commuting or if I'm doing yard work, whatever it is, where I can't actually be working on my business or be present playing with my kids. Like I'm taking down Christmas lights a couple weeks ago and it's like, okay, I need a book going on right now or crypto education on YouTube. Just saying. Um, if there are no other questions or no other comments or remarks, I can let this go. I'll leave this up for like 30 more seconds, but I do appreciate you being here. And uh, next week, I'm going to keep it super short just because I will be traveling and I got to pack and everything. Huh. Procrastinate, leave packing to the end. But luckily, I just traveled to Creative South a couple weeks ago. Um, and so most of my stuff is like ready or my toiletries and my suitcase is out. So, you know, I got my system and my packing and realize I overpacked this last time and this will be a shorter conference so I can underpack. Um, but yeah, I, I hope I get a chance to work with you, whoever's watching in the three week boot camp too, like I will blow your mind. I promise I will uh, confidently say that I believe in what I'm doing. And yeah, I would just love to have a chance to connect and uh, grow with you along the side and be your coach and build a relationship. So uh, without further ado, I am rambling now and I will let you go and the replay will be up shortly. So 
Peace out. Much love. Thank you.